Well, good morning again, everybody. As I said, my name is Mark. I'm one of the pastors here. Thank you for being here this morning on Mother's Day. We always laugh as we're planning out what the service flow is going to be like, uh, because sometimes we pray for half the service, and then it's like, okay, I got about three and a half minutes for my message, um, so buckle up, everybody. We have been going through a series called I Am. Before Easter, we were going through a series called He Is, because we were talking about knowing God. What are the attributes and the names that God calls himself? And we said, when I know who he is, then I know who I am. So we had this natural progression. And so in this series about I am, we had to ask ourselves, and as I'm having conversations with Pastor Heather as we plan out these different Sundays, why is it important for us to know who we are. And Heather did a great job summarizing two weeks ago when she said the plans and purposes of God revolve around people. The reality is, is that God chooses to use each and every single one of us. Each and every single one of us is known by God. We are seen by God. We can be used by God. And ultimately, we are loved by God. And I don't want us to miss what we were made for. And today, we're going to be exploring the fact that I am created for a purpose. About a month ago, and when we talked about who he is, we talked about how God is the creator. And that's important for us to know because that means something for me as the created. And if I am created for a purpose, created with a purpose, then there's something that I was made for, and I'm made for God. Now, it's Mother's Day, and did you ever growing up have a time when your parent, either your mom or your dad, your guardian, whoever watched over you, did they ever tell you what your purpose was, what you were made for? A few times I was told that I was made so that the dishes would get washed, or sometimes I was said, hey, you're old enough now to do the laundry. You didn't think that you were created just so that you can have a free ride, did you? Or I was created to be a little space heater for my mom because my dad is very warm-blooded and my mom gets cold a lot. And so I am a lot like my father. So here you go. Mini heater has been created to sustain your warmth. I tell my children that they were made that their mother and I had them because we loved them and we wanted to have a family, that we wanted children to love, to snuggle, and to smush. And so sometimes our parents will tell us these things of like, this is why, and sometimes it's more serious and sometimes it's more jokey or what have you. But we all know that our world does actually have a serious problem because what happens when someone tells you the wrong reason for your purpose? What happens when you go your entire life being told that you were made for something untrue? As Heather was praying earlier over disconnects and family, we all recognize the reality that not every family was healthy, and some of us come from, from hurt from our parents because of some of this unhealth. And as I look at the world around me, I honestly get angry sometimes when I see the confusion that runs rampant in our country and in our world. Because what are we taught we're taught that you came from nothing. We're taught that your life is what you make of it. We're taught that you are what you feel. And because of this, what do we see in society? I know so many people that live lives in confusion and depression because they just don't know. They don't have an answer. The answers that they have received, they don't believe or agree with. 
And so we're just left with this big old question mark. But I believe that God is truth. I believe that as creator and us being the created, that God does not want his creation to be twisted or confused. That if he gave us a purpose, he would also communicate what that purpose is. If, if, if you have a child and they have a question, we usually try and answer that question. Unless it's the question why and it's the 75th time I've heard it today. I may refrain, but for the most part, I'm not going to be like, no, I'm sorry. I'm just going to ignore that. God is not sitting around ignoring your question of why am I here? What was I made for? Because I believe God knows and God communicates with us. There's a story I love in the Bible and it's the book of Job. And Job has a terrible circumstance happen to him. And then for probably too long, it's just him and his friends talking about this problem. And it's a lot of back and forth and them coming up with all, those, all of their own answers for God. And at the very end of the book, God shows up and God responds to them. And I encourage you to read, if you're interested, Job chapters 38 through 41, as it is God's response. But I'm just going to pull out a little snippet from it. Job 38, verses 2 through 4, God responds and says, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man, and I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. And from there, he goes on and talks about, like, I did this and I did that. I made all of these animals. I did all of these things. Do you know where I keep lightning? Do you know where snow is stored? The answer is you don't because you weren't there. And one thing that I see in Scripture is that created things do not decide their purpose. We get to go to God and say, what is my purpose. I do not get to decide that for myself. And in these chapters in Job, I'm always fascinated by the things that God chooses to say. He's like, were you there when I created everything? And he gives all these descriptions. And then he gets to places that I would never expect God to go. As he's like, look at the deer. Do you know the time and the year of the season that it gives birth? Do you know and do you count the days and the months until that deer is ready to be born? And as I was reflecting on that this week, I was like, wow, like, God cares and is counting along with creation on something as, to us, unimportant as a pregnant deer. Like, no offense to all the deer in the world, but that doesn't take up a lot of brain space throughout my week. I wonder how the pregnant deer are doing right now. But God does. And if God cares about that, that is so unimportant to me, how much more so does God care about every single little detail of our lives? So what is our response as created things? Jesus is talking to his friends, and he shares a parable with them, a story. And in Luke chapter 17, verses 7 through 10, he says, Suppose, of one, suppose one of you has a servant who is plowing a field or looking after the sheep. Will that person say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now, sit down and eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. And at first, as I read that, I'm like, well, that's not super encouraging. Like, hey, do your job and don't expect a thank you and just respond with, I, I, I just thank you for the opportunity to let me serve. 
But I have to hold that in tension with everything else that I know in the Bible. As we've been going through the entire story of the Bible, there are so many spaces that talk about you have been adopted into God's family. You have rights. You are an heir. You get to rule and to reign. But then this one little, one little story jumps out to me as, as we talk about what it means to be a humble person of, hey, we have all of these perks in God's family, but at the end of the day, remember, I am God and you are not. At the end of the day, you come forward before God and say, thank you for, for letting me be here. Thank you for that. And the reality is, is that I am created to be known by God. That is one of the biggest things from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible is God desires to be in relationship with his creation. You would expect God to just sort of be like, this is my creation, it didn't work out, wipe it out, we're starting over. Or make us a bunch of robots that love him perfectly. But God had a plan for each and every single one of us that we would be known by God. And so we're going to read Psalm 139. The whole thing, it's a little long. Normally I would cut it out, uh, little parts and bits here and there. But I think it's important for us to read the entire thing all the way through. It'll be on the screen, or if you want to grab a Bible, Psalm 139, a Psalm of David. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a, war, a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become light, night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, and all my days were ordained for me, were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would outnumber the grains of the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent, and adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. It's a pretty powerful psalm that David wrote. I always laugh at the end there just as he gets done with, hey, wipe my enemies off the face of the planet, but if there's anything that's not good in me, <laughs> I want to check your heart there, David. Um, but in this psalm, we are reminded of just how much God knows us. I do not fully comprehend what David means when he says, all of my days were written in your book before I even existed. But we do know from all of scripture that God knew you 
and chose you before he created everything. That God knew the way your nose was going to be, the way your hair was going to be, the way your voice is going to be, all the things that you either love or do not love about yourself, God knew, God designed. And as God created all of these things, he didn't just do it and then send us off alone. He continues to be with us. He knows me when I get up and when I lay down. David said, you know all of the ways of my life. I just interpret that as like, you know the quirky things that I do. You know the way that when I was a kid, I would eat, take all the crust off of the bread first, but then still eat the crust. I wouldn't not eat the crust, but still eat that anyway, and then eat the middle of the sandwich, because that's the best part. You know all my ways, God, because you made me that way. And so this God who created us, who desires to be in relationship with us, he had a plan for us to not just know him, but to be like him. Because each and every one of us, I am created to be like Jesus. All of the Bible is pointing to the fact that Jesus is the most important part. In our Bible study this morning, we were reading out of 1 Peter and we were reflecting on Jesus being the cornerstone. A cornerstone is the most important part of a foundation in the the early ways back in first century when you would build a structure. If you take the cornerstone out, it's all going to fall apart. If you take Jesus out of my life, it's going to fall apart because I was created to be like him. First John chapter two, verse six says, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. So when I am struggling with my life, when I'm asking myself, what was I made for? What am I supposed to be doing? I look at Jesus. I go to the gospels. I go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I say, Jesus, how did you live your life? And how can I do that too? Because Jesus was the man who touched the untouchable. Jesus was the man who changed his plans constantly and didn't have an attitude about it. Jesus is the one who went where his own people group refused to go. Jesus is the one that invited a group of young people that were unqualified and nothing like him to be in his friend group. He's the one who was the king of heaven, who left everything to be nothing and to die for us. And so when I want to know what was I made to be like, I have a perfect example. I was made to be like Jesus. He is the litmus test for me. How am I doing? Well, let me look at Jesus. Am I like that? No, I think I got a little work for me to do. In Psalm 25, verse 5, the psalmist says, Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. That was loud. And my hope is in you all day long. There are times when we need to look outside of ourselves for the answer. And we go to God and we say, Guide me in your truth, because you are truth. Bible says, God cannot lie. When I ask a question, he's not going to try and trick me. And so when I go to the source of truth, he will continue to reveal not only who I was made to be like Jesus, but who I am becoming. Because we need to be like our king. Jesus is the king of everything. And all of scripture, as I talked about earlier, talks about how we are going to rule and reign with him. And I feel unqualified to do that, which means he needs to be working and growing me so that whenever he says, hey, this is the time when humanity rules with me, I want to be ready for that. 
So on this Mother's Day, when we talk about what it means to be created, know that you are known and loved by God, that God sees you, that God made you with a specific purpose to be a specific person, that he made one of you. I'm always fascinated that we don't find duplicates of like, you know what? Martin Luther King Jr. was really great. We're going to just make another one of him. No, one shot, one time, that's it. And so if God made each and every single one of us one time, one shot, we want to make sure that we are living our life well. I would always appreciate Heather's praying because Heather feels deeply in a way that I do not feel. And, and the way that she phrased earlier of the, the blessing that it is to be a woman, the, the, the other side of the equation of God's identity and his image. I just want to encourage all of the women in the room that God made you to be you. He didn't make you to be a man. He made you to be a woman with all of the special things that that comes with. So praise God for who you were made to be. And praise God for moms because without it, this world would be a worse off place. So Jesus, I thank you, God, for today. I'd like to, as I mid-prayer, I'd like to invite Margaret to come up as she's going to be leading us in our time of communion. Jesus, I thank you that you created today to be today. Both Mother's Day and the day that we are all feeling exactly what we are feeling, whether that is the highest of highs or the lowest of lows. I thank you, Jesus, that your presence is with us, that as your creation, God, you are in our midst. You desired each and every single one of us to be adopted into your family. So Jesus, I thank you for your love today. I thank you for your grace. I thank you that we are chosen. God, that regardless of whatever family we grew up in, Lord, a perfect family or a broken family, God, you invite us into yours. So I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for the spiritual moms, the physical moms, the dads, the spiritual dads, all of us that make up this family. It's in your name I pray. Amen.